All right, Robert Breaker here, and get out your Bible, if you will, and let's have a Bible study today. Uh, we're going to go to uh, 2 Peter today, and this will be our sermon for Sunday. I want to teach you a little bit, give you a little bit of Bible teaching, but I also want to preach to you. And today we're going to look at this topic of Christian maturity. Christian maturity. And I want to ask one question. Are you a mature Christian? I mean, that's a really good question, isn't it? Are you a mature Christian? We live in a day and age of very immature people, unfortunately. Um, my generation and the ones after that, uh, there wasn't that much maturity. They, uh, a lot of the kids, they don't, they don't grow. They don't become adults quickly enough. Uh, oftentimes, they live at home till they're, what, 20, 30, 40 years old. And so what the world needs is what Christianity needs, maturity. Every individual person needs to mature and grow up and become an adult. So today we're going to look at this, and I'm going to teach you something. I'm looking forward to this as a Bible study, but I also want to preach to you today about this. And let me just say, if the shoe fits, wear it. Amen. If this is a message that is for you, then please accept it and take it and learn from it and use it in your daily life. So let's start in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Peter 3.18, the last words of the Apostle Peter, in which the, uh, the Apostle Peter says this, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So the Apostle Peter here in 2 Peter 3.18 tells us, and actually you could, you could argue that this is a command, grow in grace. So what we need as Christians, you see we're saved by grace, grace through faith. Now we need to grow in grace. After we're saved, we need to grow as Christians. And that was the last words of the Apostle Peter. His desire was, I want to see people who claim to be Christians, who are saved, to grow in grace. So how's the first way to grow as a Christian? Well, the first thing is get saved. You know, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And this is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And the gospel is how that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. So before anyone can grow as a Christian, they need to be saved. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all what Jesus did. It's all about the blood that he shed and how the Bible says there's no forgiveness without the shedding of blood and it's the blood atonement of Christ that saves us. And uh, uh, Romans 3.25 says, When God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Salvation is by trusting in the blood. The Bible calls the gospel the gospel of the grace of God. So we're saved by grace. So the first thing you need to do to, be, to, to grow and mature as a Christian is to be a Christian. Are you saved? Are you trusting only in the finished work of Christ? Are you trusting in the blood atonement of Christ? Are you trusting the gospel? If not, you'll never grow as a Christian. You've got to be saved first. But after you're saved, there's seven stages of Christian growth. Seven, this is what I'm going to call this today, the seven stages of Christian growth. And it's interesting to me that this is actually in the Bible. We're going to take all five, or all seven of these uh, these stages from the scriptures themselves and I'm going to show you what the Bible says about them and I want you to ask yourself which one are you? Are you number one? Or are you number two? These are all progressive. These are all growing. You start at one and you end up down here at seven. Some people are still at the first step as Christians. They haven't grown and I want to ask you, what do you want to be as a Christian? You should strive to be number seven. And we'll get into this here a little bit today. So we're going to look at this today, Christian maturity. Are you a mature Christian? How do you line up as far as in God's eyes? When you're saved, you become a babe in Christ. And I have three kids. I would have had four. Uh, we lost one when my wife was eight months pregnant. And that was our first. And we lost it in Honduras. And so she's buried over there somewhere in Honduras, and we named her Esperanza, which means hope. And we lived in a little village called La Esperanza, the hope. And so we have a hope someday that when we get to heaven, we'll see our, our first baby who was born into this world, not alive, but I do believe she's alive up in heaven, and I can't wait to see her someday. 
But uh, I've had other children. We have three kids, two girls and a boy. And it's amazing to me, the oldest is 10, the youngest is a year and a half. And it's amazing to me to see the stages of growth of a person and how they start out as, as babes and as children. So the first thing I want to say is, the first thing that happens is you're a babe in Christ. You can say you're a baby. So the first of the seven stages of the Christian growth is you start out when you're saved as a babe in Christ. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, I'm just going to give you as many verses as I can because I feel like my words are so inadequate. Uh, when I stand up and I speak, I just feel like my words are meaningless. But the Bible says the Word of God is powerful. So I want to give you as many scriptures as I can. I want, this, I want this to be the Word of God speaking to you. So that's why in many of my sermons I do my absolute best to give you as many verses from the King James Bible that I can. Now 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1-4 through 4, we read, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So when you first get saved in the Bible, you're called a babe. You're a babe in Christ. You're a newborn babe. And we'll see another verse on that here in a second. And what do babies do? Well, the first thing a baby does when it comes out, usually, is it cries. I remember when uh, Emma was born, she came out, and she just looked around and didn't even cry. I never saw a baby that was born, and the first thing it didn't do was cry. She's a good girl. <laughs> She's been a real blessing. Our, our other baby came out, uh, the, the youngest, Conrad, and he came out and he cried, but his little lungs were so small, and he just his cry wasn't that loud. So that was kind of nice to not have to put up with a really loud, loud, loud cry. Uh, our middle one, uh, she cried like a normal baby when she came out. But what do babies do? They cry. Well, they're needy. They just don't know what else to do but just go, wah, 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 and they just cry, 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 cry. And that's what babies do. Babies cry often. And look what it says here. Paul is speaking to these people in Corinth, and he says, look, you're, you're just babies. You haven't matured. You're still babies in Christ. Look what he says here in verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For why one saith I am of Paul and another of Apollos, are you not carnal? So the Apostle Paul says when you first get saved, well, you haven't learned a lot of Bible, and the Bible is like milk, and you need milk in order to grow. A lot of times, as soon as a person gets saved, why well, they're still in the flesh a little bit, and they don't understand a lot about what the Bible says yet. They've understood the gospel, they've understood enough to get saved, they're trusting in the blood atonement of Christ, but now they've, they're still in this body of flesh, and part of the Christian life is fighting the flesh and living a holy life, and that's, that's hard. To fight against the flesh because the flesh is carnal and it wants to do certain things. And so we see that Paul says, look, you guys are a bunch of babies. And what do babies do? All they do is just cry, 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 cry. And Paul is saying to these converts of his in Corinth, look, you guys are a bunch of babies. You're just crying. You're just envying and you're strife and you're causing divisions. He says, you need to grow in grace. And you haven't. Let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. Sadly, it seems like today a lot of people that claim to be Christians, they don't grow past this first stage. And the way we can tell who or what they are is by the way they act. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses, well, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the submissive milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So the word of God is like milk. So the word of God is like milk, okay? So the word of God, the Bible is like milk. And our little boy, he's still breastfeeding. He's a year and a half. But how often does he breastfeed? Two, three times a day. And he needs that milk to grow. Well, the Bible is our word, and we need the word of God. We need at least once a day to eat. Usually we eat two, three, four times a day. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> I try to only eat two meals a day, sometimes three. But uh, we need to grow. And how do we grow? Through the milk. Well, the way you grow as a Christian is through the milk of the Word. You need to read the Bible. Get more of the Scripture in you. Understand what the Bible says. And if you do that, then you will grow as a Christian. But if you're not studying the Word and reading the Word of God and learning and desiring it like a newborn babe desires milk, then you're going to be still a babe in Christ. 
Now look at verse 1, 1 Peter 2, 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. So we're supposed to lay aside some, some, some things as a Christian. What are we supposed to lay aside? What, what is one of the things we need to do after we get saved in order to grow up? We need to lay aside all guile. What is guile? Guile is trying to deceive people. We need to lay aside all malice. Malice is like hating someone because of, they do something you don't like or, or vice versa. All hypocrisy. We need to lay aside all envy. And we need to lay aside all evil speaking. You see, I've met some people out there that claim to be Christians. Well, they even claim to be King James Bible-believing Christians. And all they do is they sit around and they speak evil of other people because they're envious of them. And with their heart full of malice, they try to deceive other people as they talk bad about other Christians in Christ. That's not a mature Christian. That's a babe in Christ. That's somebody that needs to grow up. You say, you speak from experience, Robert Breaker? Oh, yeah, yeah, my whole life, ever since I've been saved, there's been people that talk bad about Robert Breaker. And you know what? I could care less. But I wish they would grow up. And I look at that and I say, well, I don't want to be that. I want to be grown up. I don't want to be a baby. Babies are needy. We just saw that um, also when we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that such people, the reason they're like that is they're carnal. They're full of envyings. They're trying to stir up strife. So you mark her down. If you find someone that's a Christian, and all they're doing is, is going around and trying to cause division in the body of Christ, and let's say they are saved, then what are they? They're babes in Christ that have not grown up yet. And the Bible commands us in 2 Peter 3.18 to grow in grace. If they have no grace, then they haven't grown yet. And they're not even following the scriptures. It's like they're, they're looking at the milk and they're going, eh, nah, I don't want that. They're malnutritioned Christians, if you will. They're not studying the scriptures and following what the Bible says. Look at Ephesians 4.15. So what I want to do is I want to be a true Christian. I want to be a mature Christian. I don't want to be a, a baby that just cries and screams and hollers. And, and that's what a lot of so-called people that say they're King James Bible believers do. They're still babes in Christ, they're in the flesh, they're carnal, and all they know how to do is attack and put down and lie about other people. And I look at that and say, man, why don't they grow up? Go to Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 15. Ephesians 4, 15, it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. The Bible tells us what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to speak the truth in love. Why? Because of verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay in wait to deceive. There are some people out there that just want to deceive people with guile, with malice, with hypocrisy, with envy. All they want to do is, is stay in the flesh and cause strife and division and speak evil of other people. They just want to be a babe in Christ. They don't desire to grow in grace because they don't have any grace. I don't want to be a person like that. I want to grow. I remember in my life, I can still hear my father. He's been gone now for over 10 years, but I can still hear his voice in my head. And so many times in my life when my father said, Son, grow up. Just grow up already. Son, won't you just grow up? <laughs> and that's helped me over the years and made me think, Look, as a, as, as a man, I want to grow up. And that's, that's a, a physical. I want to physically be a grown man. But spiritually, I want to grow, and I want to be a strong, mature Christian. So the first thing is, grow up. Don't be just a babe in Christ. As soon as you get saved, start learning the Bible. Start studying. And don't be somebody that just, as a Christian, lives in the flesh and continues on acting the same way you did before you were saved. Don't be a critical, spirited, mean person. Learn to have some grace. And don't do these things. The Bible says to lay these aside. So anytime you find somebody that says they're a Christian, all they are is a mean-spirited, hateful person that just talks bad about others. and it's They're just a baby. They're just... It's like, grow up already. Why don't you? Well, let's go to 1 John chapter 2. The second stage of Christian growth is little children. 1 John 2 verse 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, 
My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for, for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. As you grow as a Christian, you become a, a little child. You know, you, you, you go on from the first stage of just being a baby, and the more you read the Word, the more you study, the more then you start to care about other people, and you say, wow, I, I really want to tell them about Jesus. And, and you get this desire in your heart to want to witness to people and tell them about Christ, the propitiation for our sins. Propitiation. And that's what we should do, propitiation. And you should go out and tell them the gospel and tell them how to be saved. And that's one of the things I love to see is when somebody gets saved. And then they're a babe in Christ. But I like to see them say, you know what? Now that I'm saved, I need to witness to my parents. I need to witness to my friends. I need, I need to tell others about Jesus. And that's something that I enjoy. I see they're starting to grow. And not just be mean <laughs> and talk bad about others. No, they're starting to say, you know, the Bible says I shouldn't do that. I'm going to try to live a, a godly life. I'm going to try to live in such a way that I'm living a holy life and I'm serving the Lord. And so I see that and I say, Amen. So what you need to do is you need to grow. And uh, in my ministry, I've seen a lot of folks get saved. and They're babes in Christ for a little while, but I can see they're starting to grow because they say, Brother Breaker, you know, now that I'm saved, I want to see other people say, what do I need to do? I say, well, there's a place to go get tracks and go pass out tracks. Go to fellowshiptractleague.org. And uh, I don't like all of their tracks. I only like the one, All This I Did For Thee. And I say, get those, pass those out. And, and you're starting to see someone starting to grow, and they're caring about other people. And in the, in the passage here in 1 John 2, 1 and 2, it says, little children. And then it says, we have an advocate with the Father. He's the propitiation. What should we do? We should tell everybody about our propitiation, our substance, about Jesus Christ who died. And that I see that desire in people when they get saved to want to win other people to the Lord. That's good. It shows that they're growing. The next stage is children. Now... If you've ever had children, you see those stages of growth and how they go from, from a newborn babe to, to, a, to a child. And then they begin to become a toddler and when they first learn to walk and first learn to talk and all these things. It's a wonderful thing to see uh, a person going through this and growing. It's very sad to see their growth stunted. So I'm using this illustration of the physical growth for spiritual growth. I want to get more into that, but I'm probably going to give you a little bit of stories about my kids and things that I've seen in, in this life, having children, and it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing to have kids. But children, go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. The Bible uses the term children. Galatians 3, 26. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, the Bible says this. Galatians 3, 26 says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So when we're saved, we become a child of God. But where does a child come from? Well, he starts as a baby. <laughs> so you start out as a babe in Christ when you get saved. I was saved July 29, 1992. And then you come, become a little child, and you start to see some growth there and some desire to want to see other people become saved. Then you become a child. Of course, when you get saved, you're automatically a child of God. But as you grow, you become a child. And so the word child. Now, notice what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. I wanted to get to that. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and verse 11, look at what Paul says. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So we're all children for a time, but the good thing about being saved is you can grow rapidly. The more you study, the more you read the Word, the more you try to live a holy life and please God, the more you attempt to serve Him, the quicker you grow. And one thing we need to do is we need to put aside our childish stuff. Now I've met a lot of Christians in my life that were childish. They were very childish. They were not mature, spiritual, godly Christians that were walking in the Spirit. They were childish. And because of that, they, they lived a very childish lifestyle. They weren't very nice. Paul says, no, let's, let's put away our, our childish things, and let's put God first. I like what Jesus says in Luke 6. Let's go back to Luke chapter 6 and verse 35. So as a Christian, we're supposed to grow. Luke chapter 6 and verse 35, we read, 
But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto and thankful and to the evil. Kind unto the thank unthankful and to the evil. For he is merciful. So God is a merciful God. And God says, look, we need to uh, learn to love. And as children, children learn to love. And it's interesting to see children loving. Uh, little boy Conrad of mine, when he was little, I'd hold him. I'd love to hold him. And as time go went on, he doesn't want to be held. He doesn't want to be held. He just wants to run and play. Now he's getting a little older where he'll come to daddy on his own and get up in daddy's lap. And I say, I love you. And he said, love you. And it's just, wow, amen. And there's some love there. And what a great thing to see him. He's a child. And children need to be loved. And then we teach them to love, then they'll love others. Unfortunately, there's some people that claim to be Christians that all they want to do is fight. <laughs> and sadly, what do we see? Well, we see a lot of times children fight. I've got my girls. One's ten, one's seven. And sometimes they fight. And we hear... You know, one of them, hey, hey, mom, why'd you do that? And it's like, okay, kids, what's going on? No fighting. You're supposed to put away childish things. You're not supposed to fight. It wasn't say here, you're supposed to love your enemies. Boy, that's a hard lesson to learn, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are our enemies. How do we love them? Well, part of the way of learning to mature as a Christian is learning to love your enemies. Those that do evil toward you and say bad things about you, you got to say, you know what, I love them anyway. That's the mark of a mature Christian. But someone that claims to be a Christian and all they do is attack you and put you down and lie about you and say dirty things about you while they're just a they're just a child. They need to heed what Paul says. They need to put aside their childish ways and grow up as a Christian. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Look at what Galatians 5, 13 through 15 says. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but, to, but by love serve one another. So we that are Christians, we need to learn to grow up. We need to learn to have love. We don't need to follow the flesh and be carnal. You see, it's babes that are carnal. We need to learn to walk in the spirit that we fulfill not the loves of the flesh. We need to learn to love one another and serve one another. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even as this. In this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now look at verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because why? Because a lot of people that claim to be Christians, well, they just act as children all the time, just fighting one another. That's not very mature. See, we still got four more to go. So you need to grow up. Don't just be a child. There's a lot of Christians, they're just a bunch of babies. Then they grow a little bit, they become little children, and they begin to grow, but but they don't let go of their childish ways. What's the next one? The next one in the Bible is young men. The Bible talks about young men. So what does this correspond to? Well, a babe in Christ is what? Since he's born till I don't know, a year or so, maybe two. Little children, what, three, four, five, six, seven? Children, what, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Then you got young men. Well, that would be more like your teenagers. That would be more like, you know, starting to become a man. Starting to learn to put aside your childish ways and learning to grow in, in which you're starting to become mature. Mature enough where you can get some responsibilities. <laughs> you know, where you can be depended on, where you can be trusted. Where you can look at you and go, well, yeah, he's not somebody that we can't trust. It's just some some crazy person that, that, that can't even do anything right. They've learned to do some things for themselves. Let's go to 1 John 2.13. In 1 John 2.13 it says, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning, and I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you've known the father. So many times he's going back and forth using these terms. But after you're saved, you should learn, you should grow. And you come to a next stage, and you come to the next stage where you learn to love other Christians. And then as a young man, you come to this point where it's like, wow, I, I'm learning to get victories against the devil and against the flesh. And I'm learning to, to quit this sin and to do this and, and not act like that and, and to be responsible and to do right. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. As I preach this message, I want to ask you, what stage do you feel that you as a Christian are in? A lot of times Christians say, well, I, I want to be one of these, 
but it's very hard for me to forgive my enemies, okay? You're still one of these. Or, you know, I, I can't stand that guy over there, and I can't stop calling him names. I hate him. Well, you're, you're still a baby in Christ. You're carnal. Learn to grow. Learn to grow in grace. Titus chapter 2, verse 6. Titus 2, 6 says, Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. And look what it says here. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. As you grow and as you mature as a Christian, you, your goal should be uh, to get to a point to where you're, you can be a pattern or an example to others of how they should live the Christian life. You're not falling off the deep end into sin. You're, you're doing your best as a Christian to try to grow every day. And you're reading your Bible. And you're becoming trustworthy as a Christian. And other people can depend on you. And you're an example of what a Christian should be. Have you got that far yet? Well, unfortunately, no. A lot of times there's people that claim to be Christians, and they might be old men, you know, in their 50s or 60s. But they're a bunch of babes in Christ because they're full of the flesh. They're carnal, and all they do is go around and name call, and it's because of these things right here. All they want to do is stir up strife and division. That's not very nice. The Bible says here you're supposed to have good works, uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. You're supposed to be sincere and grave and, and temperate, and, and you're supposed to have sound speech. You're not supposed to just say stupid things. You're supposed to say, you know, the Bible says this. The Bible says this. And whatever problem in your life, you always go back to the Bible and say, you know, the Bible has the answer. And you're able to teach other people how to be a Christian. And you're a good example of a Christian. You're growing up like a teenager that finally uh, gets the trust of his parents. You know, the greatest thing a teenager can do nowadays is get a car. And so you get to be 16, 17 years old, and your parents say, well, you're mature enough now, son, that we're going to give you the keys. And you can, you can drive. Well, you now have the power of life and death in your hands because you can literally kill somebody or kill yourself driving. But you have reached that level of, I'm long, young enough, I'm mature enough, I can take this responsibility. Same thing spiritually. Have you ever reached the level as a Christian where you're mature enough that other Christians say, you know, we can trust him. He's an example to us of how to be a Christian. Hope so. The next one I want to put up here is fathers. Fathers. 1 John 2, 14. Now, it was there in verse 13 as well. I write unto you fathers. But 1 John uh, 2, 14 says, For I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So fathers. A father is more than just a young man. A father is someone who's now, well, if you look at it physically, is no longer a teenager. You, you, you reach 18, 19, 20, you get married, you, be, you get more responsibility than you had before. And you've got you've to take that responsibility. You've got to understand, okay, now I've got duties that I have to do. People's lives are at stake. A father usually has children. So now I've got to work hard. I've got to do these things because they're counting on me to feed them and things like that. So even more responsibilities and duties and things that you have to... That's a real mature Christian. Do you feel like you're one of them? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4.15. 1 Corinthians 4.15. Spiritually, you should be a father when it comes to leading other people to the Lord. Look at what Paul says, 1 Corinthians 4.15. For though I have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have not have ye not many fathers? For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Paul says, look, whenever I led you to the Lord, I, you spiritually are my sons in Christ. Can you ever say that you've ever led somebody to the Lord? Have you ever won somebody else to Jesus Christ? I have. I mean, I'm not bragging. I thank God for it. I remember the first time I got to win someone to the Lord, I was so excited. I took them to the scriptures. I showed them as many verses as I could, and they understood, and they believed. And it was just like, praise God. Well, that spiritually, that's my son in Christ. And I hope that person will mature to a level to where they go out and win somebody else to the Lord. So spiritually, now I don't like the term father. <laughs> you know, the Catholic Church likes to use that term. I got an email the other day where someone says, Father Breaker, thank you so much for this. I go, oh, no, 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 no please don't, don't call me that. 
Okay, um, that that's a Catholic term. Yes, I know in the Bible that spiritually, when you lead someone to the Lord, you're their spiritual father in Christ. But I'd rather not use that term because that's, a, that's something the Catholics have hijacked and used for themselves. So please don't call me Father Breaker. But in Christ, when you win someone to the Lord, they're your spiritual son or daughter in Christ. Now first, uh, oh, let's see, Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 4. So spiritually, you can become a father in the sense that you're winning people to the Lord. But physically, in your physical life, if you are a man and you are a Christian and you are married and you have children, how should you be as a Christian? Well, Ephesians 6, 4 says, And you for fathers... Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Let's go to Colossians 3.21. In Colossians 3.21, look what this says. Colossians 3.21 says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. So one of the things that we as Christians who are fathers that do have kids should do is, is sure we're supposed to discipline our children and teach them and raise them in the nature nature uh, the the admonition of the Lord but we're not supposed to in the flesh act like a bunch of babies and just put down our kids and make them feel horrible and make and, and, and discourage them we're supposed to encourage we're supposed to edify so if that's the physical realm then how about spiritually are Christians supposed to go around and just discourage other Christians all the time? What's sad to me is to see men who've been saved for years, older men who claim to be Christians, and all they do is talk bad about other Christians and put them down and say horrible things about them and mock them and laugh at them, and all it does is discourage them. Are we as Christians supposed to walk around discouraged all the time? No. We're supposed to encourage one another. But unfortunately, we have some people that claim to be Christians. They, they want to say that they're spiritual fathers in Christ, but they're a bunch of little kids. Spiritual, they're a bunch of carnal little people that do these things over here to try to discourage other people. Look, I need all the encouragement I can get. People say, what about these people on the Internet that, that, that say bad things about you? Yeah, whatever. You know, I do my best to stay away from that because I don't care. People send me their videos and send me the comments and say, look at what these... And I say, why? That's discouraging. I need encouragement. As Christians, we're supposed to be mature and encourage one another, not discourage one another. Especially in these last days when there's so much evil. We need more to encourage. In Spanish, there's a word that we use called animo. Animo means get excited, get, get encouraged, I guess. And so whenever I go down to Mexico to our church down there, I always hear the pastor say, Animo, hermano, animo. Encouragement, brother. Be encouraged. Love the Lord. And uh, unfortunately, in the world we live today, many Christians, all they want to do is put you down and work you up into a, into a, into this this little pity party, in which you're walking around all the time, going, oh, "I'm a worse Christian that ever lived. I'm no good." Well, how are you going to grow like that? We should encourage one another. We should edify one another. Help each other to grow in the Lord. Not just go around and talk bad about others and discourage one another. That's very sad. Very sad. The next one I want to say is elders. <clears throat> an elder is an older person who's been a Christian for some time and has grown throughout their entire lifetime as a Christian. They haven't stopped or, or, or their growth wasn't stunted and they just stopped in one of these. They've grown. And I love elder Christians. I love people that have been Christians for 40, 50, 60 years that know the Bible. Some of them call me on the phone and we talk. And it's so encouraging to me to hear an older man who's, who's read his Bible for many years and who is a really mature Christian. And I love to learn from them. One of my favorite things to do is I would travel around and preach in different churches is whenever I'd meet the pastor who's usually 20, 30, 40, 50 years older than me, I would always love to say, Pastor, as a young man, tell me what is the greatest advice you could give me from your years of experience as a preacher. One pastor says, well, I wish I'd prayed more. All right, I put that in my head and said, I got to make sure I remember to pray. Another pastor says, don't ever get discouraged. I said, amen. I mean, it's so easy to get discouraged. Another pastor says, whatever you do, don't quit. God wants us to be faithful. He doesn't want us to quit. So, anyway, and, and I just soak up. I, I, one of my favorite things my whole life has, has been to be around older men and learn from them. 
I remember my uncle, he used to take me fishing. I remember my grandpa, he used to take me fishing. He showed me how to fish. Uh, take me do this, take me do that. Um, my dad wasn't with me for four years. My mom divorced my dad, and so for four years I had to live in Oklahoma without my father. And that, that was awful. That was devastating. I wish, I mean, I hate divorce. I wish it never happened, but it did. And I didn't have anyone around for four years to teach me things. And that's when I turned 16. I got my car, and I didn't know how to change the oil. I went across the street to an old man named Marvin. And I said, Marvin, I need to change the oil in my car. Do you think, think you could show me how? And Marvin showed me how to change the oil in my car. And I, to this day, I, I don't even know if he was a saved man or not. I don't know. But I think fondly of him as, as even though he wasn't a Christian elder, I look at him as an, an older man that I could learn from um, uh, physically. And he taught me how to change the oil in my car. And every time I change the oil in my car, I always think of old Marvin who taught me how to change the oil in my car. So we need elders. We need Christian men who have been Christian for many years, who have lived right and who have grown, that are able to teach others. We got enough babies. <laughs> Where are the elders? Where are the older men in Christ that are teaching and edifying? and encouraging others in Christ. 1 Timothy 5.1 Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. 1 Timothy 5.17 Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. While these elders would be like ministers or pastors or deacons, they, they would have shown themselves to have grown and matured so much that they were given in the church responsibilities, like a deacon and such. Verse 19, against an elder received not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. I mean, if a man has, has been in Christ for many years and has shown himself as a mature Christian, well, the last thing the Bible says you're supposed to do is some other guy who claims to be a Christian to come over and say, well, I accuse you of this, that, that, that. Who would be that that's doing that? A babe in Christ. Now, if it's true, pues, all right, you're supposed to bring two or three witnesses. Say, look, you're doing this wrong, and, and, and we've got two or three witnesses here to prove it. But I don't see that often today. Often I see people that claim to be elders, that are a bunch of babes in Christ, and all they do is talk bad about others. They're childish. Grow up. Be a real elder. Be a teacher. Be somebody that people look up to and say, man, I want to be like him. I want to learn from him because he's got so much knowledge and wisdom. Be somebody like that. Don't be somebody like this. That's just a carnal baby that, that all you can do is just talk bad about other people. 1 Peter chapter 5, look at what the Bible says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 8. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Well, there's a lot of people in this world that claim to be Christians that are full of pride. While well, they are so proud of themselves that they think they're right and everybody else is wrong. And they're just chomping at the bit to go talk bad about somebody else because they think they're so much better than that person. You mark her down, that's not a mature Christian. That's somebody that's still up here as a babe. The Bible says to have grace and to be hu humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 6, verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. God wants us to do right. What does it say? It's casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Verse 7. Verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, sinking whom he may devour. But what does it say? Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So the devil's the one that comes and accuses and attacks. What are we supposed to do? Just resist them. Why would a Christian attack and make fun and, and cause division and strife among the brethren? If you're an old man in Christ, then learn to be a true Bible believer and a true elder. And learn how to edify and encourage other Christians. Grow up! Don't be a babe in Christ that just goes around to try to stir up division. You carnal, carnal person. The last one here I want to say is the aged. The aged or the aged, okay? Let's go to Titus chapter, well, let's go to Philemon first. Right before the book of Hebrews is the book of Philemon. So right before Hebrews is the book of Philemon. Philemon, verse 9. Paul is speaking of himself. This chapter is about a person who is a slave. 
a person who is a uh, servant to his master, who has run away from his master, and the Apostle Paul says, now you go back to him. Because he's a Christian and you're a Christian, and, and in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, we see the rules in the Bible of how God said if men are saved, they're supposed to rule their house, and how they're supposed to treat their servants, and how the servants are supposed to serve their masters. And here in verse 9, it says, Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul calls himself Paul the aged. Paul says, look, I'm getting older, and I have grown my whole life as a Christian. And it's interesting, verse 10, I beseech thee for my son, Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. He said, I've begotten him through the gospel. I led him to the Lord. Now this guy Onesimus, the, the servant, the slave, is saved. Now he's growing. Now you, as the his owner, his master, you grow as well. And so he's telling people, grow up. Paul says, I'm the aged. I'm, I'm one that has gone through so much. And I want to encourage other people to live right and do right. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. So, I'm not aged yet. I mean, I'm 40-something years old. I mean, I guess when I'm 60 or 70, I guess I can say I'm aged. But I want to be one of these spiritually. I want to be the best Christian that I can be. Someone that others can look up to and that can say, Hey, this guy's all right. He's trying to teach the Word of God. He's trying to encourage. He's trying to edify. He's trying to be a true, spiritually mature Christian. So that's my goal. That's my goal is to be like Paul. Titus chapter 2, verse 2 through 5. That the aged men be sober, all right, grave, temperate, sound in the faith, in charity, in patient. How are we supposed to be? God wants us to be, as Christian, if we are Christian, God wants us to be like this, all right? This is how every Christian should act. And it says there in verse 2 that we should be sober. Well, sober means you don't go around getting drunk, right? And then it, it, but also sober means you're, you're awake to the truth. You know the truth. Grave, all right? Temperate. Grave, temperate. Um, tem doesn't say temperament. <laughs> doesn't mean angry. Temperate means you, you don't fly off the handle and act crazy and stupid. Um, sound in the faith. So you're, you've got sound doctrine. You're sound in the faith. He says you're supposed to be, um, have charity. He wants us to be charitable. Where's the charity today? I'm a born again child of God. I'm saved by the blood of Christ. And I can't tell you how many times how many times people that claim to be Christians have lied, said horrible things about me, wrote me dirty letters, were mean, were unkind, lying, slandering my good name, saying things that weren't true. And I look at that and I say, well, why aren't they like that God said a Christian's supposed to be? The only thing I can figure is they're back here somewhere. They're going backwards when they're aging. They're not growing in grace, as the Bible says. So that's what a man's supposed to be in verse uh, 2. Verse 3 says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Verse 4, That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So God talks about the aged, and it's, it's men and women. I mean, this isn't just stages of Christian growth for men. Men and women both need to grow in the Lord. And women need to understand that if you're a godly Christian woman, and you're up in age and you've been saved for many years, your responsibility is to teach other women how to love their husbands and how to follow the Bible and how they're supposed to be a keeper at home and, and do good things and to be chaste and be discreet and not be given to wine and doing these other things. That's what the Bible says. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. So what I want to be, and I hope you do too, is a godly Christian. I want to do my absolute best to keep growing every day as a Christian with the goal of becoming one of the aged. Now if the rapture comes first, then amen. I'll be happy with that. I was a babe once in Christ, and I was a child, and I did my best to put away my childish ways and mature 
as a young man. And as a young man, I went to Bible school and I began to learn more. And then I was able to, to learn enough to be able to go win other people to the Lord. And I have spiritual sons and daughters in Christ that I've led to the Lord. And the Lord called me into the ministry to be an evangelist, to be a missionary, and be a pastor. And I've done that. And now as a Christian, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to encourage, to edify, to help other Christians, to lift them up and say, hey, this is how you're supposed to be. Not put them down and discourage them and talk bad about them and lie about them and ridicule them and mock them and say horrible things about them. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need one that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who have by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The Apostle Paul is writing here to the people in the, the Hebrews, He's writing to people that were saved Jews, I'm probably writing to some that weren't saved as well, but he's writing to them and he says, look, what you ought to be is a teacher. And you ought to teach what? The Word of God. So when a person first gets saved, we teach them milk. We try to show them what the Bible says in the hope that they'll grow on that milk. And then when you get older, then you get the meat. Now, I'm an older Christian, so I love the meat. I love to do Bible studies about the profound, deep things of the Bible and talk about that. And, that, and I enjoy talking about, you know, who is the 144,000? Who were the two witnesses? You know, getting into the deep things of the Bible. To me, that's fun. But I can, I can only do that so much because people pop up and they're carnal and they're little children or they're babes in Christ. And they come along and say they're Christians and all they want to do is attack and name call and ridicule and put down and say, Oh, this breaker guy is a moron. He's an idiot. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. And all they want to do is fight and cause division and strife. And they're so full of pride, it shows... And I look at that and I go, well, well, God bless them. I guess I'll have to preach a message like today and get back to the milk, you know, where the milk says, look, this is, uh, this is how the Bible says you're supposed to be as a Christian. It's fun to talk about the things of the Word of God. It's fun to deal with the meat. But if a person's not growing in the Lord, then we've got to go back to the milk. And there's some folks out there that they claim to be Christians, and it's obvious they're babes in Christ because they haven't grown up yet. They're acting like a bunch of babies, claiming to be Christians, and yet they're just screaming and hollering against other Christians. That is not what the Bible says. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 16. Let me give you a little bit milk, a little bit of milk today about how a Christian is supposed to act so that they grow up and they quit being a bunch of carnal babies. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Some Christians are. They think they're the smartest guy that ever lived, and that their job and that their ministry is to go around and correct other people. <laughs> well, good luck with that, because I don't see a ministry in the Bible of that. In the Bible, there's a ministry of edifying, but not tearing down. But they say, oh, my ministry is to tear others down. Well, help yourself. I'll see you hit the judgment, buddy. And when you get no rewards, don't you say it's my fault. I tried to warn you. I tried to help you. I tried to give you the milk of how you're supposed to live and grow as a Christian. And it says here in verse 17, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yeah, so if someone does evil or says evil or speaks evil of me and they claim to be a Christian, I don't need to sink to their level and do the same back. I've grown up a little bit. I'm a little more than mature than they are, so that's why I don't fight back. People say all the time, Brother Breaker, these people on YouTube are attacking you. Why don't you make a video and, and tell them where they're wrong and, and fight back? Why? They're name-calling, they're ridiculing, they're lying about me, and you want me to stoop to their level? God bless them. I hope they grow up. That's all I say. Then it says here in verse 18, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Okay. I'll live as peaceable as I can. Verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. So it's not up to me to go and tell where they're wrong, where they're lying. It's, look, let God handle it. 
but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So they're in God's hands. It's not for me to sink back to their level and become a babe in Christ and then go out and speak evil and be angry and, and hateful and mean and talk bad about them because they're talking bad about me. No, I'm a little bit more mature. I've grown up. And I look at that and I say, oh, grow up. I was a second grader once and in second grade, you know, we did childish things and we fought as kids. But no, I'm not going to do that when I'm older. I'm going to grow up a little bit. Verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt see heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So that's always been my desire, is when someone says they're a Christian and they do evil toward me, I just say, well, God bless them. I'll let God take care of that. I'm not going to try to defend myself. I'm not going to attack them. I'm not going to stink down to their level. <laughs> not going to make videos against them when they make videos against me and vice versa. Not going to write them a dirty letter when they write me a dirty letter. If I do write to them, I just say, look, the scriptures say this, and I'm praying for you, and I love you. And that's the right way to be. That's the mature way to treat this. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 through 15 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonians, and he says, You're to edify and to comfort one another. <laughs> Where is that today? Uh, a lot of people today claim to be Christians, and they're not out there edifying one another and comforting one another and loving one another. Rather, they're out there attacking one another, speaking evil of one another, uh, lying, saying dirty, hateful, mean, name-calling. It's like, dude, wake up and grow up. You're definitely not following the Bible. Look what it says here. Verse 12, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. I've had some people email me and say, Brother Breaker, there's this guy, or actually there's several people and several guys. There's these guys on YouTube and they're saying bad things about you. Why don't you contact them and reconcile with them and get right with them? And it's like, why don't they do that to me? I don't have a problem. I love them in the Lord if they're saved. And I say, what a shame that they don't want to grow up. If they want to grow up and they want to contact me, my home phone is on my website. They can call me up and say, you know, I have this problem with you and this problem with you, and we'll talk it out. But I don't see why they think they need to go to the entire world on YouTube and, and tell the entire world that they have a problem with me. I don't see that in the Bible. Matter of fact, Jesus said if you have a problem, you're supposed to go to the brother first. And then if he doesn't listen, you take two or three other brothers. Then you take it to the church. So I, I don't understand these people except that they're babes in Christ. And they're not spiritually mature. And that saddens me. I pray for them. I don't put them down. I want to edify them, try to lift them up, and try to say, hey, come on. Come on over to the side of the scriptures. Have a little milk from the word. Learn a little patience and love. Look at verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, and comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. So I try to be a spiritual, uh, godly, mature Christian. And I have patience. People want to say bad things about me, they can help themselves. It says to warn them that are unruly, so let me warn you today, if you claim to be a Christian, and you're over here doing all these things, then you have not obeyed the scripture, you've not laid aside what God said to lay aside. So if you are saved, then you're up here. But I would like to warn you that God is going to avenge you. God will get you if you're not living the lifestyle that you're supposed to as a Christian. No, you can't go to hell if you're saved. But you can sure pay for your sin today. Why don't you grow up? Learn to be like the Bible says that you ought to be. Have a little bit of love and patience toward all men. Well, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, look what it says here. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 and 4. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 we read, we are bound to, to thank God always for you, brethren, as, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. The Apostle Paul says, wow, it's so great to see a Christian get saved and grow, because the more you grow, the more charity you'll have. <laughs> 
I've met people that claim to be Christians. They're the most uncharitable people. They're angry. They're hateful. They're mean. They're, they're full of uh, haughtiness and pride and anger. And all they live for is to speak evil of others. Because they're full of malice and, and, they, and by guile they want to deceive people into thinking that some other Christian is just the worst person in the world. They want to call strife and division. And what are they? They're a bunch of babies. Just like a newborn babe. They're just and they haven't even grown as a Christian. That's sad. That's sad. Look at verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Apostle Paul said, when I saw a Christian that was patient and charitable, that's the ones I gloried in. I said, thank God. Those are true Christians. Those are the ones that have grown because they've learned what it is to be charitable and have patience with others. Well, they know what it is to have grace. Somewhere up here I put grace. We started with the verse. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace. What is grace? Putting up with other people you don't like. Wow. Yet there are people out there that claim to be Christians. They have no grace. None. Not one ounce. Not one drop of grace do they know. They might be saved. They claim to believe in the blood of Christ. But they're babies. They've not grown as they should. A mature Christian has grace. Charity, patience, and love. They live to edify and to comfort and to build up and encourage other Christians. Because as we looked at today, that's what the Bible says that you're supposed to do. And an aging Christian, they want to do that. They, they live to edify. The word edify means to build up. My desire as a minister and a preacher is to build up Christians and to help them grow and become mature. But these people that don't ever come past this one, all they want to do is tear down and attack and ridicule. And I don't know much about them except they are carnal. They're walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. And the Bible says that we that are mature Christians, we're supposed to walk in the Spirit, that we fulfill not the lust of the flesh. Now there's a whole lot more that I could say about this, but I think I've made my point. <laughs> I think I've said enough. And the question that I had from the beginning of this is, are you a mature Christian? Or are you very, very immature? A lot of people claim to be Christians, and they're just as carnal as they can be. And they walk in the flesh, and it shows. And everything they say shows that they're not reading their Bibles. Otherwise, they would do their best to be sober and grave and temperate and sound in the faith and charitable and patient and, and, and love to edify and to teach and to be patient. But they don't do that. No, they don't want even the milk in the Scripture. Because the milk is learning to be without these things. Learning to lay aside guile and malice and hypocrisy and envy and evil speaking and carnality and strife and division and pride. So my question is, are you a mature Christian? Maybe you just got saved, but you're, you've gotten past a lot of that. You're just a little child. Or maybe you're a child. And you're struggling with learning to love other Christians. So that's something you need to do. Maybe you're a young man and you've matured enough to where you're a Christian and you're starting to get some responsibilities. Maybe you've led someone to the Lord. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're a Bible teacher. Maybe you're a missionary. Maybe you're an evangelist. That's great. Strive to be like the Apostle Paul. To do everything you can to live like him so you can actually start teaching the meat of the Word of God. Look, I thank you for watching today. I did my best to give this sermon in love. I'm not preaching against anyone in particular. I love all Christians. I just want to see them love one another. And with charity, with patience, with love, edify, edify, edify. Thank you for watching. God bless. We'll see you next time.